Hello. He's Oliver. She's Lucy. And you're listening to Anyway Movies. The podcast of film fanatics and movie maniacs. The podcast of discussions, debates and occasional distractions as we talk about all things cinema. If you like what you hear, be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on podcasting platforms. Big shout out to my sister Molly for creating the logo and images for our podcast. Give her a follow on Instagram at underscore Molly underscore Joanne underscore. Now that's all out of the way, dim the lights, turn the projector on. And let's start the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Anyway Movies. Today, we've got a very interesting episode. We are movie fans that are about to talk about movies we will never watch, like, ever. (laughs) I'm just waiting for Taylor Swift to come in. No way! Are never ever ever watching these movies together. We are never. <laughs> we seem to be having a running theme now that every single episode starts with some sort of sing song. You started it with your. I bl- did not start. That is not true. You were the one <laughs> who did the SpongeBob theme song. <laughs> but did we have fun though? We did have fun. Yeah, we very much apologise for these intros at the minute. Obviously, we're not interesting enough to come up with any talking bits that are good, so we just decided to sing instead. But who's complaining, really? We'd actually have to have an audience to get complaints. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, we, we'll need to consult our two people who watch this podcast. Oh. <laughs> uh. So, Lucy, would you like to talk a little bit about what today's episode entails? Right, so today we're going to be talking about basically what the title says. Movies we will never watch. There are various reasons why certain people don't want to watch certain movies. It could be due to personal beliefs, or it might not be for them. Or a certain actor or director is in it that they don't care for. And basically, me and Oliver have come up with a list of three movies that we will never watch. (laughs) So we'll just be talking about them and our reasons behind that. And just a little notice, if we mention a movie or movies that you personally do like, or maybe are even some of your favourites, these are just our opinions. To movies we've never watched and never will watch. <laughs> We're just not interested. So if you really like these movies, good for you. Right, so do you want to start first, Oliver? All right, then. My first movie I will never watch is actually a franchise of movies. And that is the Fast and the Furious fran- franchise. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know they were a thing until, sadly, um, the actor Paul Walker passed away. That was the first time I ever heard of them. And I believe that was the around the seventh movie. So I'd gone a while without even knowing they were a thing. And I didn't have an interest in watching them. And then like a couple of years ago, I was flicking through the channels and the first one came on TV and there was nothing else to watch. So I watched it and it wasn't bad per se. I just didn't really enjoy it. And from what I understand, the first one is the most grounded, most accessible one of the franchise to watch. For a plot that's about like, well, I think... You think I paid attention to this movie? Not really. (laughs) But I think there's like hijacking or stealing or something illegal going on that's connected to this street racing world. And Paul Walker's character, I think, goes undercover. All I'm going to say, it didn't do a very good job of explaining or showing the story, in my opinion. 
on the basis of it, it doesn't seem like the type of story that warrants a series. Also that, I don't understand how a series about street racing or drag racing, because apparently they are different things that I, I recently learned. I don't understand how that's gone on to have multiple movies in a main franchise series and also has spin-offs. Mm. But what I've also heard is the spin-offs are actually better than the main ones. Oh, okay. Which I think speaks volumes about yeah. about the franchise itself. Have you ever watched any of them? I have not. No. Never really been into that kind of genre really. My dad would my dad describes them as popcorn films. You know, the films you don't watch because you want to or there's something really soul wrenching or really deep to connect with and you don't watch it for the characters um or the storyline. You just watch it for the action or because it's there. Yeah. And you see that seems plausible. And that's why I say, how the heck do you make 10 movies out of that? Out of movies that don't have a particular plot or character development. I don't understand how you can make 10 of those and still be continuing. I mean, surely they get a bit repetitive, right? I mean, the first one felt a bit repetitive, so... (laughs) And that was just the one film. Exactly. Like I, I understand that not every movie or movie series or TV series or song or whatever kind of media or art form. I, I agree with the fact that it doesn't all have to be really deep and emotional. And mm-hmm. there's always good and lightness to be found in movies that are just fun to watch. Those are some of my favourite movies because it's just a nice time. But to have a series like this go on for so long where they're basically doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, there's got to be other better popcorn films. Yeah, I mean, I guess another good comparison could be the Marvel movies because on the basis of that, that could be a series of 22 films that are basically doing the same thing over and over again. Superhero has origin story, fights evil bad guy, and they win. That happens in nearly every single Marvel movie. But the thing with the Marvel movies are that they have a different hero and different set of powers and a different origin story each time. Whereas with the Fast and Furious series, from what I've heard of it, it is the same characters the entire time. I think the only film other than the spin-offs that doesn't focus on the same characters is Tokyo Drift. I believe that has a completely different set of characters, but apparently it didn't do as well as expected, which is why they brought the main characters back in the next one and so forth. Mm. I don't know. But yeah, Fast and Furious, not for me. Fair enough. Okay, so... This first choice is probably going to raise a few eyebrows because it is vastly regarded as Danny Boyle's best film. And that is Train Spotting. Now, I've heard a lot about this film. My dad has recommended it to me so many times. He's told me that this is a film that he thinks everybody should watch. And It's just not for me. It's kind of the same opinion as you have with the Fast and Furious movies. It's just not for me. It it, it just does not look like the sort of film that I would enjoy watching, really. Yeah. But I will be more than happy to assume that it's a great film because I don't know a single person who has seen Trainspotting and hated it. It, it it kind of has the vast majority of people saying it's amazing. So I am more than happy to sit back and just say, it's a decent film. <laughs> just say to myself, it, I'm, I'm sure it's a great film, but I just do not want to see that. Um, yeah, I mean, I am all for gritty British film with, you know, a hard heart and not for the faint of 
heart and stuff like that. I mean, I've watched This Is England and stuff like that. I, I kind of like that whole vibe, but I don't know what it is about train spotting, but there's just something about it that just does not click with me. And I do not think it would do me any good. So I am more than happy leaving that on the shelf and not experiencing it. You know, when I was younger, I genuinely thought the film was about train spotting. Right. Like, I didn't watch it because I just thought it was about, because like, you go to train stations and you see people like taking photos of trains because that's like their hobby. And that's cool. I just thought it was a film about mm. that. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm going to agree with everybody who's saying it's a good film because I've heard way too many praises about it to think that it could be bad. And I'm sure that if I ever did see it, I'd probably think the same as well. I'd probably think, oh, this is quite good, actually. But I just, at this moment in time, I'm not interested in setting myself up for that because it will break my heart in two. Oh. And I do not want to willfully do that to myself. So, yeah, that's basically the basis of it. Do you want to go over to your next one? Okie dokie. So, if you listen to our Disney questions episode, then you will maybe remember I had a very strong dislike for... (laughs) the first Maleficent. (laughs) To no one's surprise, I'm definitely not watching the sequel. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Not to... I don't want to, like, retread and re-say things that I've already said in previous episodes, but it just... It doesn't make sense to take (laughs) arguably the most iconic Disney villain and turn her into some hero when that's not the reason we love her. (laughs) And Mm. to make these films based on her side of the story and seeing it from her point of view, when you end up changing the story anyway, so it's a completely different story from her point of view, not just the same story from her point of view. I've said that so many times, they don't even sound like words anymore. (laughs) And I personally always liked how in the animated film she was just kind of mysterious you didn't really know about her but you know people feared her and I did a bit of research about this in the time that the original animated Sleeping Beauty is set in the reason why like she's so angry that she was not invited to the christening is it? I think it's more of a welcoming party. Uh, well, because in that time period, it was like a custom for everyone in the kingdom to be invited to meet the new baby. And it was kind of petty in the sense that, so you're telling me I wasn't invited. Oh, fine. I'm just going to curse your baby then. Like, <laughs> there's something really cool about that. I don't know what it is, but I liked that. Yeah. And I also liked how you didn't have to it wasn't described to us or told to us and it wasn't shown over and over and over again why people feared her or who she was. You just kind of had this sense about it and it worked and it made sense and it made her, again, the Maleficent. And then these live-action movies have just taken that all away. Mm. And from what I understand... The second movie just feels more like a retread of the first Maleficent movie where she's not happy that Aurora is getting married and so she's going evil again. Yeah, you're not missing much. Uh, I have watched Mistress of Evil and though there have definitely been worse Disney sequels, it did not match the first one. I quite like the first one, but the second one doesn't need to exist it really doesn't i can barely remember anything that happens in all honesty so you're not really missing a lot enough said about that okay moving on to my second choice is the divergent series the movie series that is based off the books from veronica roth the divergent series stopped 
after Allegiant Part 1. They were going to do an Allegiant Part 2, but that never came into fruition. So that is why I'm never going to see it. Mainly because the series is not complete. I don't want to be attached to these characters and then suddenly be left in the lurch over what happens to them because the last movie <laughs> hasn't happened and never will happen. And I kind of feel bad for the creative team and the actors because they put so much hard work into making the series. They wanted to be the next Hunger Games, I guess. And it didn't turn out the way they wanted after working hard for three films. Um, they just fell at the last hurdle and I can't help but feel sorry for them. Apparently the films are not that great either, but you still kind of feel sorry for them after having an image in their head of completing the series and ha having that thought of, I have been in a series or I, I have worked on a film series, that is success in itself, even if the films are bad. Yeah, I just don't want to watch them. I'd rather read the books because at least they're written and set in stone and won't have bits missed out. So, yeah, Di Divergent, I just do not want to watch because I, I, it, it's kind of like with Game of Thrones as well. Game of Thrones ended really badly, apparently. I've never seen Game of Thrones. So... I don't want to watch Game of Thrones because I don't want to get invested in seven seasons of good character development and plot and stuff like that and then be disappointed at the final hurdle. Yeah. With Divergent, there is no final hurdle. There is no build-up. There is no end. So I, I don't want to put myself through that. So Did... that's why I'll, I'll never watch Didn't them. they make like a... TV series or a mini series to finish off the story. They were going to, but they never did because Shailene Woodley, who played the lead character, said that she didn't want to do anything with the TV stuff. She said that she signed up to do films, so it was going to be a film or she's out. And basically, she walked out and everybody else did as well which meant that Allegiant Part 2 did not happen. Mm. And, uh, yeah, it, it was a whole it was a whole kerfuffle. I think everyone's sort of over it now, but at the time, there were loads of movie Divergent fans that were a bit heartbroken, to say the least, and I kind of don't want to end up the same way, so... Yeah. Yeah, I'll miss that one out. Thank you. <laughs> So I guess this moves on to our final two movies. <laughs> the big ones. The big ones, yeah. The ones that will very likely lose us our oh. two audience members. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the support. Okay. My third and final movie that I will never watch is Titanic. <gasps> the scandal. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Love you. Love you too. Um, <laughs> I do want to put like a little pin in the side of this first by saying there's a chance that we might do a podcast episode on this because we have talked about it briefly. But as of right now, I have never seen it and I do not intend to watch it well, the main reason why I don't really want to watch this movie is because I already know the story very well. I think most people know the story, regardless of whether they've seen the movie or not. It is a big point in history. I appreciate that it's one of those movies where everyone has to watch it at least once. And... Just looking at the cast alone, it's definitely a movie I would probably enjoy watching, but I just don't have, I don't have a want to watch it, I don't have a need to watch it. And also, I do have some thoughts on the ending. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so apparently, 
on Mythbusters, they proved that both of them could not have fit on the door. That doesn't mean they could have they couldn't have swapped. That is true. That is true. But don't you think that would have killed them both? <laughs> Well, they, they they both died at the end of the movie anyway. Jesus Christ, Oliver, don't remind me. Well, think of it this way. Okay, so Rose was in an abusive relationship, right? Yeah. And so her going back to Jack when she passed on, I understand it, but they knew each other for like two days. I'm not saying she should have stayed with the abusive relationship i'm not saying i agree with the abusive relationship but just the fact that you know she had family she had grandchildren she had her whole life she she held herself back from leaving because of a guy she knew on a ship for two days mm, this could be a great debate episode because i disagree with pretty much everything you've just said I mean, I completely get it. I completely get the argument. Obviously, you haven't seen the movie. I've seen it quite a few times. It's more to do with the fact that they come from completely two different backgrounds. It's kind of like Romeo and Juliet in a way. They come from two different backgrounds. And, you know, she's rich, he's poor. You know, Jack doesn't really have a family. She does, and they do not want her to end up with him. Rose kind of becomes Jack's wife in a way because he never really had one before it. He travelled and he did what he could with the money that he had but Rose was sort of his wife on that ship. She was the reason he died. You know, well, that is true but (laughs) (laughs) that is true actually because there is a bit where she's on a lifeboat but she jumps back onto the ship. If she hadn't have done that, Jack might have lived. Well, You've just proved your point now. I get it now. Also, question. Does Jack know that she's in an abusive relationship or does he just know that she feels trapped? He just knows that she feels trapped. I don't think he knows to, the, to what extent. So to, for all he knows, this is just some rich girl who is bored of the fact that she's rich and could essentially be just using him because she's bored and just wants some time relieved. I guess you could argue that, but also he changes Rose's life. He shows her things that she's never been able to do because she's in this hoity-toity family life, like going to boring dinners and having to use proper language like he teaches her how to dance and he teaches her how to spit which is quite a funny scene and just teaches her basically how to live life and I think that's why he made such a mark on her because she realized on that ship that she wasn't trapped she could go out and do different things it was just her family that was holding her back so by having a life with Jack, she probably could have gone on to do loads of adventurous stuff and fun stuff that she wouldn't have been able to do by having a wealthy family. Even though she is in a very, very privileged position, she doesn't get any quality of life out of it because she just feels trapped. And I think Jack frees her from that, which is why I think their relationship works so well together. And I think that's why she mourns him and does feel love for him even though they only knew each other for two days I completely get what you're saying but there is a reason why Titanic is three hours long (laughs) three hours I'm not watching it if it's three hours it's actually longer than three hours I think it's about three hours 11 minutes because it keeps getting it keeps cutting back to like the present day and stuff where old Rose is talking about what's happening and stuff so it is longer than three hours i mean it is a great film i completely understand why you don't want to see it 
I, also, you basically know everything that happens anyway. Exactly. You know that Jack di- You know that Jack dies. You basically know everything that happens, so I completely get why you don't want to watch it. But I just thought I'd get that little vent out there because people slack on the relationship so much, but I personally think it works. But go off, on <laughs> <laughs> Go off, sis. Live your life. <laughs> get your shit. Yeah. Also... What's with the scene when he's handcuffed in the bottom of the ship and he's teaching her how to use an axe? <laughs> like, you do not have time for this. You're you're um, going to... I mean, you'd both die anyway. But you... <laughs> like, in that kind of situation, a few seconds could mean it's literal life or death. Yeah. It could mean that make the difference. And they waste it on having her practice how to swing an axe. Like, I understand she's never done it before, but it's not rocket science, it's an axe. If she did go for it and did accidentally cut off his hand, I mean, there's so much going on, I'm sure the adrenaline would have helped him. He probably... He would have died quicker, though. I mean, well, he was going to die anyway. I guess so. But we didn't know that at the time. So you're telling me you went into that movie watching it for the first time, not knowing that he was going to die? When I first watched the film, it was in year seven. I had no idea that Jack died at the end. No idea. So I think that I had a really, really good first watch because I literally had no idea what was about to happen. Yeah. (laughs) Do you want to talk about your big movie you never want to watch now? Yes, I do. Go for it. My final film that I will never watch... Will also raise a few eyebrows. Oh, I'm ready for it. The Godfather? <laughs> Get out. Is this you firing me? Why? <laughs> well, I can't really fire you because, like, your head editor. <laughs> yeah, you need an editor for these episodes, you know. <laughs> the Godfather is heavily regarded as possibly one of the finest pieces of cinema in history. And it's one of those films that everyone should watch. It's very high rated. Nobody hates it. Everyone raves about it. And unfortunately, I have very high expectations for it that I just know it will never meet. Yeah. I've kind of raised the stakes so much in my head, wait, like, until the perfect moment I see the film, which now is never, but (laughs) that I don't want to be disappointed by it, but I know that I will because I, I just have way too much anticipation for it. I just know that it won't impress me. And I really wish I had watched it before now because... Back where I first heard about the film and heard how great it was, I was thinking, oh, I mean, I think I'm going to wait a little until I'm a bit older and understand the concept a bit more. But then I'll probably love it. But I think I've waited a bit too long now that it's kind of become this perfect thing in my head. I kind of already have the what the movie looks like in my head already that I just know it, it will not translate to what is actually on the screen who knows i may be surprised and it might actually be better than what is in my head but at this moment in time i just have way too much anticipation for it and i just know that i'll end up disappointed with the final result so i'm not going to subject myself to that i'm not going to submit myself to that i'm not going to sub anything to that (laughs) And I'm just going to leave it, I think. I'm happy living my life without watching The Godfather. And I don't I don't care how many people that angers. I could just imagine so many Godfather stands being like, No, Lucy, this film is right up your street. Watch it, please. Sorry, not going to happen, uh, at least at the moment. Have you watched it? No. <laughs> no. But... There but, we go. Is, is there any reason that you haven't seen I've it? I've just yet? really not. Got, I've not really gotten round to it. I want to watch it. Yeah. 
my dad um, speaks very highly as of the trilogy as a whole. His favourite is the second one. Right. I mean, I have heard that the third part is not very good. So, again, I don't really want to be disappointed by the outcome of the third one either. At least, so, at least it's got an ending. Um, oh, yeah, at least it's got an ending. Divergent couldn't do that shit. <laughs> Divergent but could never. Hopefully I live a long life, so I have loads of years to change my mind and watch it one day when I'm bored on a Sunday evening. But right now, at the age of 22... I just have way too much expectation for it. So there are the reasons. We've we've had some hot takes. Some very hot takes. A few debates there as well. Things got a little bit heated. Unexpected, but always welcome. I mean, I do I do love Titanic. I think it is an absolutely excellent film. And so so I will always defend it if somebody says something about it, but yeah, I completely got all your points. I, I I appreciated what you said as well about their relationship and what it meant to each other and what Jack was able to do for Rose. And you explaining it that way, I admit, did make me see their relationship that I personally haven't actually watched <laughs> <laughs> in a different light to other than girl who feels trapped by her family meets poor boy who's snuck onto a ship. Taylor's old as time. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, I knew there was always depth to the movie. Wasn't that the movie where everyone said, oh, Leonardo DiCaprio should have won the Oscar, and it, since then everyone's been like, how has he not won an Oscar? So then when he did win the Oscar, it was just a moment of Finally. And Kate Winslet's face when he was accepting, that was beautiful. That moment they shared. Yes. You've seen two of the movies I've spoken about, and I've seen none of the movies you've spoken about. Yeah. I had to take a second there just to count. I completely forgot. (laughs) I was like, how many movies have we talked about again? Not like Uh, we've used this format before. No, never. Never before. (laughs) Completely new territory. Anyway, I think this concludes today's episode. If you enjoyed it, then please like our Facebook page to keep you updated over what we are going to be doing with the future of this podcast. And we are also on every podcasting platform you can think of, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Breaker, Radio Public, and Anchor. And additionally... We do have a YouTube channel where we post all of our episodes on there with subtitles, so you can watch it with words. <laughs> you can read what we're saying. Woo! Very entertaining, I think, I hope. Please also leave us a review on iTunes. Let us know what you thought about today's episode. Let us know what movies you personally don't think you'll ever watch. And if there's a reason, let us know. And be open about it this is safe place we just here to have a good time discuss about movies all good with that being said we'll love you and leave you and see you next week see you next week